Yo, what's up guys, it's Bass. Today we're gonna to be going over BRC20s. It's been something that's been popping off for the past few days now. And we're gonna kind of go over what exactly it is, how you can interact with this, and I kind of like my own personal thoughts on it. My general thoughts on all of this is it's kind of a meme. Because of that, I really wanna urge people to be careful when you do this. I'm creating this video for educational purposes because I know other people are, are also probably going to you know show off how to do this and probably won't be as thorough. So BRC20s were created by Domo. Fun Funnily enough, he's actually a holder of Ordinal Faces. Shout out to him. And he kind of made a little little experiment test where he pretty much wrote out a deploy function of a token, or this is an example of what it would look like, where the P would stand for the protocol, that being BRC20, OP standing for operation, which is deploy, take being the four letter word, uh, the max amount of the supply, and the mint limit that you're allowed to inscribe at. So the first thing that I'm gonna teach is how to install the wallet that you actually need for BRC20s. Now, the best wallet that's currently out right now is Unisat. They're the only wallet right now that really supports BRC20s. As of right now, I haven't had any issues with it. I know they're 100% open source, which is dope to see. They are also special in terms of inscription and Bitcoin management to where you don't need two different addresses. All you need is one taproot address and you're all set. But yeah, you pretty much want to go to the Unisat.io site. You want to download from Chrome. Uh, you can also download from their github and set it up yourself but in my case i'm not really trying to complicate things so what you would do is just create a new wallet you would create a password for it and then you'd be given your 12 word recovery phrase after you write it down you would hit that you saved it hit continue and then you'd be prompted with creating a new hc wallet an hc wallet pretty much just means that it's a hierarchical deterministic wallet pretty much just lets you make infinite amounts of addresses and in this case it lets you choose different types of addresses which is amazing we don't really see this option with hero wallet or extra for wallet not to not to like dig at them i do wish there was a little bit more clarification for what would be the best for ordinals which is obviously taproot just so like anybody who, who hops on they could immediately tell oh like i need a taproot wallet for inscriptions and stuff like that and now you'll pretty much have your taproot address account um up here it shows the account that you have you could create another one like this uh name it whatever if you click up here at the top right where it says hc wallet number one it also allows you to create multiple hc wallets which is dope always good to have here you'll have your balance here you'll have your singular address for both your inscriptions and your bitcoin balance and then here you get the option to receive send which they have a custom option for your fee rate which is awesome here you have your history as well and then here is going to be the the main important part i'm going to go back onto my main account to kind of show it off as you can see i have a bunch of different brc20 inscriptions but let's say i just wanted to separate it from brc's because i also have a, a random inscription in here as well so if i click on brc it gives us a much cleaner look for specifically BRC20. So right below the tick name, you'll see that it says transferable, available, and then a balance. So when you inscribe a token, you're not actually able to automatically put it up on a marketplace or even transfer it to another account if you wanted to. What you actually have to do is create a transfer inscription. And pretty much what this would look like is something like this. Now to create a transfer inscription, essentially you would want to inscribe this piece of text uh, where we have the protocol, which is BRC20. The operation which is now transfer instead of mint or deploy like you would normally see the tick name which is ordi and the amount that you actually want to have transferable now once you created this you'd go back to the brc20 section and then you now would see that you have the ability to transfer out your brc20 and of course your available balance is whatever isn't transferable and then your total balance is how many of that token you have in total. And then if we click here on the bottom, you get to see different type of things that are being inscribed. On the next tab, you have the, the links to inscribe as well as marketplaces. And then finally, you have your settings option. Now in your settings option, you actually have the ability to change the address type that you have. Could be pretty great if you want to keep things all on one account. And let's say you needed a SegWit address because you're receiving Bitcoin from Coinbase, for example, and Coinbase is able to send Bitcoin to Taproot addresses. You could just send your Bitcoin to the SegWit address and then you could just send it to your main Taproot address. All right, and now if you want to learn how to inscribe things, the process is pretty simple. My best suggestion would be to go to the BRC20 site and just look up any token and then you'd be able to just mint directly from it as opposed to going to the inscribe site and then you know having to type it in here i think it's just a lot easier to look it up and then things are already kind of filled in for you for this example i'm going to be minting some face which i did not deploy by the way 
So I'm just gonna hit mint directly and things are already kind of filled out. As you can see, the tick name is already filled out as well as the max amount that we're allowed to inscribe. And at the bottom here, it lets you do multiple inscriptions or multiple mints, meaning that if I really wanted to, I could create a hundred inscriptions right now. But for this, I'm just gonna limit myself to doing one mint. I would hit next and then it would show us an example of what this BRC20 token would look like. As you can see, everything kind of checks out. We would hit next. And then here is the font bar. Assuming you're not already connected to the website, which the top right here will allow you to connect, what you're going to want to do is fill in your address. You are able to inscribe to any address that you want. There's not going to be as much support for BRC20 as Unisat's wallet. So I really recommend, like I said, use Unisat's wallet if you want to mess around with this. Then I would hop on the mempool site. Notice that we have a high priority of 41 sats per V-Byte which is insane by the way. Go back to the website, hit custom. I'm gonna do 50 for example. I'm probably gonna be paying like 30 cents more for this inscription, which I'm fine with, you know, it's, it's not much, especially if you wanna be first. All you need to know is that at the bottom here, this inscription will cost 12,000 sats, which is only $3.45, which is great. So we'd submit and pay the invoice. And this is also another thing that's pretty cool with Unisat site is that they allow you to pay with the Unisat wallet or you could pay all of these other coins if you really wanted to. Or you could just straight up just pay with Bitcoin, just scanning the code or just sending uh, Bitcoin to this address. For my example, I'm going to pay with Unisat. It's a lot easier to do that. I'm going to hit sign and send. Also, I should note, if you really want to be safe, you should probably double check everything before you just submit. So as you can see now, it has said we have completed it. Uh, our fee rate is at 50 sites per V-byte. And if we hit view transaction, it's going to take it to the block stream, which I'm not personally a fan of. So I'm just going to paste it in here on mempool.space. Here we get to see how long the inscription is going to take. It should be in the next block, hopefully. But a couple of minutes after it's minted, we should see it pop up here. And in fact, if we go to all, we could see an unconfirmed inscription being made, which is the exact one that we just submitted now again i want to warn everybody please be careful with brc20s because these are ultimately just meme coins now, something that could be useful hopefully is kind of having an overview of what exactly all this means on the marketplace right everything is denounced in sats right so, so pretty much what this 14,990 sats per ordi means is that for every one ordi for every one ordi token that there is it is worth 14,990 sats which is equal to $4.30. Down here, you could see the amount of ordi people are listing as well as their asking price, which is $4.30 for this example. So this is right now is the lowest price for ordi. And this listing is pretty much for 200 ordi. It's gonna come out to $859 because 200 ordi times $4.30 is roughly around $859. So now that my BRC20 has minted, I would go to this tab. I would go to the BRC20 tab and then notice that I have five available face, which is dope. Now, let's say I wanted to have this be transferable so I could list it. I would simply just click on it, hit transfer. And then here it would tell me how much is actually available to transfer right now, which is zero because I haven't done the inscription for it yet. And then it would allow me to inscribe. And then at the bottom here, which is what we're really looking for is the inscribe button to create a transfer. Inscri then it'll ask us for an amount. Let's say I wanted to do one. I could do one. I could also do two, three, four, up to five, obviously, because that's the max I have. Um, it really just depends on you. And then it allows you to set your custom fee rate, which I'm just going to set it at 50. And then once again, it's going to show us the preview of what our transfer inscription is going to look like, as well as the total amount that it's going to cost. After you make sure everything looks good, you just hit pay and it'll give out a transaction ID number for me. It just kind of got stuck, so it didn't really show up, but it'll pretty much be similar to how minting worked. So once your transfer inscription gets confirmed, you'll see that your transfer balance has changed as well as your available balance. So now let's say you want to list your token. Uh, for this example, I can't do phase because I have to wait three confirmations. So three blocks have to pass before I can actually list it. So for my example, I'm going to end up just choosing Ordi because that's an easier thing to do. And right here, we'll see all of my available transfer inscriptions that I created. Um, I would pick one of them and then hit list. As you can see, there has to be a minimum. So we would list 50 Ordi. And for my example, I'm going to go to orders and just see what's been selling. So we've seen sales for 15,300, 14,900. For me, I think I'm just gonna end up placing at 16,000 sets per one Ordi, which will equal out to $229 for 50 Ordi. So I'll hit list and then sign the transaction, which you're pretty much signing here is a PSBT saying that you'll 
transfer this inscription and now my listing has been created right here for 16,000 sats. One thing to note is that there are such thing as Unisat points on this website. Pretty much Unisat points can be gained if you use their inscribed services specifically with Unisat wallet. So the examples that I just showed you gained me a few points. For every one inscription that I did, I gained one point. Less than 24 hours, uh, the necessary amount of points to access the market is going to go down to 24, I believe, or 25 Unisat points. So let's say you wanted to deploy your own BRC20 token. All you would do is hit go to the inscribe section on the Unisat site hit BRC20, deploy, and then it'll ask you the four tick name as well as the total supply. So for example, I could do Kimi and then the total supply being 21 million and the limit per amount for fun, let's just do 10,000. I would then hit next and then it'd give us uh, the text here that we're looking to inscribe. And then I'll hit next again. Then it would once again give us the inscribing settings that we need to change. After we're finished, we just hit submit and pay. We sign and send with our Unisat wallet and yeah, it'll be sent off. And now you have made a new BRC20 token. You're very limited to what you could do. For example, you could only do four letters. Um, it's not case sensitive. So already uppercase is the same as or the lowercase. Another thing I wanted to go over is how to make batch inscriptions for transfers. Now, in this example, I'm just going to copy this text. Now, I'll actually list in the description below all the different types of operations you could do. So I would just copy this, go to the Unisat site, and then on their inscribing page, I would go to text, hit bulk, and then here I have the option to, and now I have the ability to just kind of chase the text around. So instead of doing Ordi, I'm gonna do Newt, and then the amount that I want to do is 50,000. Let's do 50,000, right? So now with the bulk option, all I need to do is hit enter and then create another line, hit enter, then create another line, and then hit enter once again and create another line. So I'm just gonna hit next, and then it's gonna ask us to double check, make sure everything's good. And then you just wanna make sure everything's correct again. It's gonna go to your Unisat address, pay with Unisat wallet, hit sign and send. And now we have just created a batch for transfer inscriptions, which is great. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this guide was pretty helpful. Like I said, with everything, please be careful, do your own research and a big shout out to my holder Domo for kind of creating this whole madness, you know, make sure to join our server. A uh, link will be down below and yeah, have yourself a good one guys. See ya.